Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. The Schedule C sole proprietorship form itself rolling into line one income of the income tax formula. Noting the Schedule C basically is an income statement in and of itself having business income minus business expenses which you could basically call business deductions resulting in in essence net business income rolling from the schedule c into line one income of the income tax formula the formula outlining the calculation on the form 1040 this being the first page of the form 1040 the schedule c ultimately rolling into line eight additional income from schedule one this is the schedule one additional income and adjustments to income part one additional income Schedule C rolling into line three, business income or loss. This is the Schedule C, profit or loss from business, has an income statement format. Income minus expenses, we're on the expenses, which is typically the largest category in terms of different types of items within it. Some expenses mean more difficult than others, such as depreciation, where, as we saw in prior presentations, even if we're on a cash-based system, we have to do an accrual type thing because the tax code forces us to do so, which is in alignment with generally accepted accounting principles. The tax code basically borrowing accounting principles in this sense, putting fixed assets on the books as an asset, which is a balance sheet account. This is an income statement. Where is the balance sheet? We don't have one, but there could have depreciation schedules which show us the balance sheet activity of the asset account of the fixed assets and the accumulated depreciation to get to the book value and allows us the expense calculation on a, a per year type of basis now remember that as we do these calculations then we have the part that is normal for accounting basis which is basically the maker's depreciation, which is a form of double declining balance. And then the abnormal components, which are added for tax code reasons, such as stimulating the economy, lobbying, political influence and whatnot, which includes the upfront depreciations like the 179 and the special depreciations, which could basically result in allowing us to, in essence, just expense the entire thing as if we were on a cash-based system in the first place, right? So that's the general idea. So we're on the special depreciation at this point in time. So now we have the question of when must you recapture an allowance? So notice a couple things just to keep in mind with depreciation that causes complications. Uh, note that as we depreciate, if we were to depreciate, say, evenly on like a straight line basis, then typically we're allocating the cost over the useful life and the book value of the property or the adjusted basis of the property would theoretically line up to some extent over the life of the property so that if I was to sell the property at any given time, it would be something you would think somewhat close to the adjusted basis of the property in terms of the sales price. This, there's an exception with regards to real estate, for example. Real estate could go up in value, even though the building itself deteriorates in value because it's a physical thing uh, that deteriorates. So that's a bit of a, an unusual situation to some extent, but all other property like equipment typically will go down in value. And if we allocate the cost over the useful life, you would think the adjusted basis would be somewhat close to mirroring the fair market value at any given time that would be like the ideal situation but when you have accelerated depreciation which the maker's depreciation is a form of accelerated depreciation and you add on top of that the 179 deduction and the special depreciation that means that you're basically taking all of the adjusted basis and getting the benefit from it in year one almost like you just expense it which means you're negating the whole concept of the accrual basis that we tried to start doing in the first place. What does that do? That means that when you sell the equipment, it's likely that you're going to sell it at a gain because you've over depreciated it, making the adjusting basis go lower. Well, if you sell it at a gain, what's the problem with that? We'll just recognize a gain when we sell it. 
well, we also have this issue with the tax rates being different for capital gains versus ordinary income. What, and the idea is that we have a progressive tax system, which means the tax rates go up over time with the ordinary income, but we also have another whole progressive, progressive set of tax rates for, that are favorable for capital gains, which you would think the sale of equipment would qualify for. However, you got the deduction on ordinary income basis when you depreciated it. In other words, when you depreciate the property under 179 special or makers, you're getting an expense that gives you a benefit aligning to the higher tax rates of the ordinary income. If you then sell it, resulting in a gain, which you only have because you over depreciated the property, then it wouldn't be fair, you would think, to take the gain at the more favorable lower capital gain rates, but rather you'd have to recapture, you'd have to basically recognize the higher ordinary income rates up to the point of depreciation that you calculated. That's one thing that comes in. With the 179 deduction, you'll saw that we also had that issue with regards to if the property was more than 50% owned by the, by the business versus personal kind of situation where if, if that ratio went under 50%, you can have like an, an issue where you'd have to make an adjustment. So these are just some of the, some of the problems that kind of come up when the law gets somewhat complicated with the, with the different tax rates, the progressive tax rates, different sets of progressive tax rates, and then applying accrual concepts and cash concepts, and then tinkering with the accrual concept. Okay. So when you dispose of property for which you claimed a special depreciation allowance, any gain on the disposition is generally recaptured, included in income as ordinary income up to the amount of the special depreciation allowance previously allowed or allowable. Now, obviously, software can greatly help us with this, but we want to be able to understand the concept of it so we, so we know what's going on, so we can check that the software is doing what we would think it would do, and so that we can explain what is happening to clients and so that we can properly plan for what taxations will take place if we sell property. So if I sold like equipment, like a forklift or something, then it's quite likely that I'm gonna have a gain because I got this huge upfront depreciation on the property, lowering the basis of the property. That gain then might be capital gains, you would think, but the amount of depreciation that we got is going to basically have to go into ordinary income or be taxed at ordinary income rather than favorable capital gains because uh, we got a benefit from the deductions in the form of depreciation at ordinary income. Okay.